Sure. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much uh, for joining in for the fourth quarter FY21 earnings call for NMDC Limited. Um, we have with us uh, the Chairman and Managing Director Sri Sumit Dev and the Director of Finance Sri Amitabh Mukherjee. Uh, sir, thank you very much uh, for giving us the privilege to host the call and uh, congratulations on the fantastic set of numbers. So, uh, without much ado, I would hand over the floor to uh, Sumit sir for his opening remarks and then we will open up for the Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Vishal, and uh, uh, glad to be here uh, for the uh, con call. Uh, NMDC uh, Q4 of performance has been, uh, uh, I mean, it's a, a great performance in terms of uh, uh, if we see the numbers, uh, production figures were about 12, uh, 12 million tons, and uh, look at uh, the uh, uh, numbers in terms of profitability, profits, and EBITDA margin, all have been at an all time high. So, we have done exceptionally well in the Q4. Uh, with, with a little bit of favorable market situation condition. However, our, uh, this is an all-time high record, uh, Q4. Uh, we also ended the year also with a turnover of 15,720, that is uh, uh, inclusive of uh, the uh, other incomes. So uh, the performances have been, have been very good. Uh, also, production, production figures also have gone up by 8%. Uh, percent. Uh, sales uh, went up by six uh, percent. Uh, so, of all put together, it, it has been a good year for NMDC. Thank you. So shall we open up for the question and answer? Yes, please. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Modi from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question. My question pertains to the royalty and the other levies. It's a known fact that because of change of the MMDR Act, uh, the, there was a huge jump. But uh, can the management give sort of clarification on it? Because uh, uh, they have spoken that uh, it was posted 28th March 2021 when I, if I'm right, the amendments were finalized or approved by the president. But from how many periods are the back, in the sort of backdated? Because Doni Mali mines are open in Feb. So, so previous two years or one year, how many years? And same way for the other two mines also, except if I'm right, the Kumaraswamy mines. Uh, the any sort of breakup or clarification as to the huge royalty jump. So, uh, so, so this uh, additional royalty uh, is effective from the date of amendment, uh, the amendment coming into place. Uh, in, ca in case of Doni Malai, we started in March. Uh, we started our production in March. So, uh, uh, so on uh, half a million ton, uh, we had to pay this additional. We had to pay this additional amount. Of 22 percent, 22 and a half percent premium, and for the uh, for other my uh, for our mines which got renewed in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, the Chhattisgarh sector, we are we are already paying so uh, from the date of amendment. So yeah, so in in the sense that from your paying backdated period. No, no, there's no back effect. It is always a prospective effect. So prospective effect means uh, can because if is that if I take into account for this royalty was paid for how many days for the Q4 quarter? And my second question, attached question to it will so in the Q1 of FI22, how, how much you have to pay royalty for the three months? If I'm right, if you have paid the for Q4 for half a month or one month, correct? So for Q4, uh, like I said, uh, we are paid. Uh, we produced uh, in Doni Malai half a million ton, so we paid for that. 
It is 48 crores in Karnataka and 101 crores in Chhattisgarh for three days. Okay, for three days. So. Okay, so I make, may, if my assumption is correct in terms of that for the Q1 FI22, we uh, the royalty amount will be almost uh, three times something which we have already booked for Q4 quarter because you have paid this for three days or or whatever, 15 days, 10 days. Anyway, the numbers are not. Uh, I mean, we we have to pay for. Uh, I mean, since the actors come in, uh, uh, come in, so you need to pay for that. So we are paying for that. Okay, okay. Thanks. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Systematic. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. So, I have, uh, so on your steel plant, can you give us some update? Uh, when are you going to start and uh, what sort of numbers are we building in for this year? And also related to that, what kind of capex are we looking for uh, the, this FI22? So, uh, so uh, the total capex for this year is around 3,700 crores, and uh, for the steel plant would be around 1,500 crores. Uh, is uh, the capex for uh, this financial FY22, and uh, uh, we are looking at commissioning the plant in the in uh, somewhere around Q3. So, uh, I mean, you you are like fairly confident this time around because obviously there have been COVID, there have been a lot yes, of yes. delays. So, so uh, there have been delays. What, what the other plant is uh, more or less ready. I mean, uh, the, the entire plant is ready. So, uh, hopefully, we are now. What, what steps have we taken for the divestment? Uh, any any progress on that? So, the divestment process uh, is basically by the government of India. They take a call. I mean, they they uh, uh, DPM does uh, work for them. I mean, that, that is up to DPM. So, uh, we are NMDC. Uh, at the moment, we do not have any. Uh, I mean, we, are, we do not have any role to play in that, so uh, so that uh, that will be taken care of by the firm. Right, and so uh, with respect to the amount pending with the monitoring committee, how much is first of all the quantum now, and uh, what is the status with this, uh, the the court case in the in the Supreme Court? So the amount is around 2,300 uh, odd crores, uh, which is there, and. Uh, uh, the Supreme Court has actually told us that uh, they would uh, only be taking a physical hearing. They would uh, hear this matter in a physical hearing. So we will be just waiting for the Supreme Court to start the process, and then uh, I mean, we'll take it up. Okay, thanks. Thanks. That was very helpful. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ADY. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thanks for taking my question and congratulations for a good set of numbers. I have uh, two questions. The first one is with respect to, again, uh, Doni Malai. So there were certain uh, demands by in Karnataka that, you know, apart from uh, the enhanced level of royalty, they were expecting something else that you have to pay some lump sum amount and all. So is there any pending amount that needs to be paid or have we booked any pending any amount uh, except the higher royalty for Doni Malai? No, there is nothing pending or we have to book any further amount. Uh, whatever uh, is that, 22.5% uh, from the date of uh, the act coming into place, uh, we are paying. So there has been no cash, uh, incremental cash outflow from the company, I mean, on Doni Malai, except for that, of course, uh, the uh, enhanced royalty. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second question is, sir, a uh, little bit intrigued by the pellet plant. Uh, this is still making losses despite, you know, a significantly high level of pellet prices. So is it possible to throw some light on the capacity utilization of that plant? and uh, why we are making losses over there so this pellet plant uh, is basically consists of two parts one is the pellet plant uh, in itself and the other is the benefication uh, uh, plant which we had now this benefication uh, plant uh, had uh, we uh, there were some technical issues in this plant uh, uh, with regard to the uh, pressure filter so that uh, part uh, we have taken care of now and it is uh, we are testing the new uh, pressure filters which have uh, been installed by a company called Teju, and uh, so now that uh, one module is ready, the next module also is uh, getting, uh, we are placing an order for uh, getting that also, uh, revamping that also, and then 
we were already the plant has started production and we hopefully uh, we believe that uh, the plant will uh, uh, gradually will ramp it up to its uh, rated capacity so what was the utilization in q4 sir q4 would be 30% probably 30% okay i have couple of more questions on a monthly basis probably i mean, I mean because we just finished the revamping uh, uh well, at the end of uh, in somewhere in march and we just started a uh, trial production so it would not be much uh, to that extent okay understood so just okay. so it was 1000 okay. tons so that's 6% annual on an annual basis it was around uh, 7% so 4000 tons you produced from that plant and sold in the month of march uh, most of it came in the month of march Okay, and it was four thousand tons. That's what that's the number you're getting. For the utilization of CMB, that correctly is thirty-six percent, but the annual okay. capacity utilization was only around seven to eight percent. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so I have some more questions, but I'll come back in the queue. Thanks, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Koda from NHDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my question. So regarding the royalty, just some clarity. Uh, so the way things stand, uh, all the mines except for Kumaraswamy, the effective royalty is 22.5 percent. And even in Kumaraswamy, from 2022 or 23, when it uh, renews, uh, it will go to 22.5 percent. Is that the correct understanding? So this is not exactly royalty. Royalty is 15 percent. This is the premium which you have to pay. So, one fifty percent of the royalty. Uh, that's that's twenty two point five percent. So right now we are paying in all the mines except for Kumar Swami, which comes up for renewal next year. Okay, and to total what you are paying is twenty two point five percent all combined. Yes, yes. Royalty and premium included. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah, and sir, regarding the DMF, how is that going to be calculated now? The District Mineral Foundation uh, contribution. Let be on fifteen percent or no? That, that that's a normal. That there is no change in DMF annuity. Okay, so so just if you could uh, clarify total statutory levies uh, as a percentage of uh, sales, how much that would be? That's around uh, anyway uh, royalty uh, DMF annuity comes to around nineteen point eight nine uh, percent, and then this this additional twenty two point five percent. Okay, understood. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vinith Malu from Birla Sunlight. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, so uh, again, just to clarify on the royalty side, only so total including premium etc. comes to about forty-one odd percent, right? Uh, on your uh, these three mines except Kumar Sangu. That's the understanding, right? Correct. Yes. Okay, and and this this and there's absolute clarity that DMF and NMT is not payable on this uh, additional premium. No. Okay, okay, thanks. Now, so my second question is regarding the steel plant. So while I understand diversion process is being run by uh, the firm, I wanted to know where what is the progress on uh, demerger, uh, because it was announced some time back that board has given approval. But uh, where exactly are we there in the process of demerger? So the demerger process has already commenced, and uh, uh, it should be by the, uh, at around in the Q, in the Q3 probably will be able to conclude the process. So along with the commissioning, you, you mean along with the commissioning yes, of yes. the along with the, yes yes yes. Okay okay so it will require shareholder approval and all right so. That for for that we need a separate general meeting or something like that. That needs also needs to happen, right? Yeah, that that, that statutory formalities will need to be taken care. Of. Yes. Okay. Uh, when do we reach that milestone? Yeah, you Because need uh, a final uh, uh, approvals and clearances. That's what you're saying. What what is that you're trying to say? Yes, so I'm just understanding in terms of milestone. You know, so we need general general meeting approval. We probably need NCLP approval, etc. Right. So I'm just trying to understand when do we reach those milestones? 
BS you can uh, answer that. Sorry? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so you you are you are talking of the milestones. Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, so 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 that will be somewhere around the end of September. Okay. Okay, and the, okay. Post these approvals, you don't expect much time uh, for the merger to be effected. Actually, hello. Yes, please. Hello. I don't get a question. Okay. No, what I'm saying is that post these approvals, you don't expect much time to uh, much time to be taken from that point onwards for the deal merger to be finalized. No, we don't. We don't see any issue in that. We don't see any issue in that. Okay. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Uh, and sir, in terms of uh, balance sheet, uh, so now you know you have a bit of a borrowing and also cash balance. So I presume this borrowing is for the steel you know, plant capex. Is that the correct understanding? You come again, please. Uh, I just want to get your question. In terms of the balance sheet, you have a bit of a borrowing, uh, yes. right? As of in the balance sheet as of this year end. So I presume yes. this is for the steel plant capex, right? Is that a fair understanding? Absolutely. That 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 is exactly. We we have already picked up uh, 500 crores uh, in terms of Mercedes. Uh, so that is for the steel plant. Yes. So sure, I think the uh, working capital arrangement also. Uh, 1400 odd crores is against. Uh, uh, 1400 is it not? Uh, 1448 is against working capital and 534 is against uh, uh, the steel plant on the through the NCB. That is the premium balance sheet. So that 1440 crores is for the working capital for current iron ore business. Yeah, for for all businesses. Yes, uh, iron ore. Diamond. I think you are asking. Uh, he is asking about the debt, whatever debt we have picked up. That's that's what a uh, loan. Uh, what we have picked up. The balance sheet. The loans would show. Uh, a total of 2,000 crores, approximately. Correct. 534 is for NCB route, which is exclusively for the uh, steel plant. And 1448 is the working capital arrangement that we have with banks. Okay. So, sir, just trying to understand, uh, I mean, given the cash that we have in hand, I mean, why do we need to draw down on working capital facilities? If I, if I have a, a fixed deposit with banks at 7%, and if I uh, uh, naturally either I'll have to break those uh, fixed deposits and lose seven percent, or take four uh, percent working capital arrangement from banks. Okay. So it is better. To okay. Okay. Uh, Understood. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you had existing okay. FDs which were yielding as much. Yeah, these are old FDs. Uh, normally, with more than one year, or one year plus ten years, up to one year ten years. So. We always take that call. If we have a uh, mutual fund, we generally tend to uh, liquidate that and use it for working capital. And if we don't have mutual fund, if we have long-term FDs, then we tend, uh, tend to draw from uh, OD, especially uh, if I have uh, to issue BGs or other things. Okay, okay. Understood, yeah. And, and sir, on last question from my side, on export side, we were getting preferential duties. Uh, right uh, now, which don't seem to have been renewed. What is your expectation regarding that? Uh, is that a thing of past now, or do you expect they, them to be restored again? No, for the current financial year, uh, uh, the whatever duties, uh, whatever concessions were being given by the government of India, that doesn't exist. So, uh, so currently there is no concession. So you need to, uh, if, if an MDC needs to export, it has to do it uh, by paying the duty of 30%, about 58 k Okay. And how much commitment do we have on export side as as, as we have firm contracts? So what, are, what was happening was that we were exporting under uh, this uh, under a, uh, government to government ag agreement uh, based on a long-term agreement. So that has now not, not been renewed now. So we don't have any, uh, at this point of time, we don't have any commitments for export. Okay, understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kamlesh Jain from Prabhuda Siladhar. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, so one question on the part of uh, steel plant. 
how much capex is spending on that front sir so the currently we have already spent 18560 odd crores and uh, the total capex to be spent is 21300 Okay, so roughly around another three thousand crore is spending, yes. which needs to be. Okay. And so uh, when we talk about the commissioning and all that, so as of now, if I understand correct correctly, uh, we have yet not uh, started the uh, commissioning of uh, coke oven batteries and uh, other ancillary units. So how how confident are we on the front of commissioning these this entire or integrated commissioning? Or are we talking about the uh, Like uh, uh, coke oven batteries or the entire integrated commissioning, because even no, last no. year, around a one and a half year back or one year back, we had uh, like they started the coke oven batteries and in the mid we stopped them and we were telling that uh, it is about to get commissioned in a six month time, but still we are six two years away from that. No, very true, very true. Uh, uh, but then, when we talk of commissioning, we talk of integrated commissioning. It starts with the coke ovens, and then heating of the coke ovens, and then uh, uh, it ends with the uh, rollout of the coil. So it's an integrated commissioning. In a steel plant uh, of this nature, uh, uh, we can't do part uh, commissioning and uh, just start the coke ovens or the blast furnaces in isolation. So it has to be the integrated commissioning. So when we talk of commissioning the plant, we are talking of the entire commissioning. So we are pretty sure now uh, the plant is uh, more or less ready. So we hope, uh, hopefully, we should be able to start. So we have still not uh, called for the tender of cooking coal and all that, and uh, it takes around six months time. So, but uh, so far we have not done anything on that part. On that part, so I'm really surprised that uh, how confident are we on the commissioning of this uh, steel plant? There we have no experience on that side. And even the consultants are not coming to India, and we are talking about the Q3 commissioning. So, really puzzled down that particular side. So it's like this that uh, as far as uh, raw material goes, coke, uh, coke, coke, uh, coking coal, uh, coking coal, we already have procured uh, earlier, and we have also placed uh, orders for uh, uh, around 75,000 tons of uh, coking coal for the coming this uh, for uh, coming requirement. Uh, so raw material part, uh, we have all uh, limestone, dolomite, all that is tied up. I mean, that that's not a major uh, uh, issue right uh, at the moment. So we are uh, pretty uh, confident of uh, starting the commissioning process. And so lastly, uh, lastly on the. Capex side, sir. In this year, we had spent like the lowest amount in last six odd years. And uh, like say, if you see any other PSU, be it coal India or sales, they had done the capex like say highest in last two three years. Despite that fact, we have a good project in hand like say uh, this screening plant at Kirandul and Slurry pipeline, which are very good on the part of the payback period. So even then, that we have done a, such a Low amount of capex of around sixteen hundred crore only. So last year, uh, uh, on the capex front, uh, we spent two thousand crores uh, uh, in the previous financial year. Now the, the main uh, capex which is there is uh, is for the steel plant. Steel plant uh, is the main capex uh, in which year. And now the, and the steel plant is almost complete. I mean, uh, the, whatever balance payments are there, we are all linked to commissioning uh, payments. so uh, commissioning activity so the, we are at the fag end so there is not much spent there uh, to be done the other thing is uh, with regard to uh, uh, capex at our mines we have a slurry pipeline we laying a slurry pipeline we are doing a pellet plant and uh, we are also doing the screening plant at uh, kirandul so all these uh, projects uh, have been awarded most of them have been awarded uh, so we are uh, some balance uh, uh, part dry circuit package In the screening plant, so there are some packages to be yet to be awarded. So we have started the process, and I think we'll be able to uh, spend money on that on those projects. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Cheda from Enam Holding. Please go ahead. 
Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, what are the volume targets uh, for next two years, and if you can uh, give uh, mind-wise breakup of Karnataka and Chhattisgarh? So, so the next year, uh, uh, our target is to uh, do almost around 44 million tons. Uh, Karnataka should do 14, and uh, around the 12. Uh, Around 13, 13 million tons is what we expect from Karnataka. The balance we will do it uh, uh, from our Baladila sector. And uh, 13 million tons. And a year after that, and uh, you have all approvals in place, or you have to go for additional mining approval to reach this 44? No, we don't need any additional approvals for uh, doing 44. So, so uh, up to 44, there is no issue. So the Uh, no additional approvals are required. And after that, what's the target? And uh, uh, how much is the mining approval uh, in place for all the four mines? I believe uh, Doni Malai and Kumar Swami are capped at seven seven each. So uh, if you can give Chhattisgarh, Kirandul, and uh, Bacheli the maximum mining plan which is approved now. So that that that's uh, that's around thirty seven point five. in the baladila sector uh, uh, the uh, in uh, um, uh, in uh, doni malai we have uh, with the, uh, it is capped at 14 and uh, uh, we are we are getting an, another additional 3 million tons we are uh, uh, that will be there in uh, the, in uh, doni malai addition, additional 3 million t- in kumar swami so that will go to 17 in uh, in some time to go so uh, uh, the balance uh, we'll have to do uh, if we have to ramp up in uh, production so up to uh, plan we are planning to go up to 100 so uh, then uh, we'll have to uh, we are uh, in the process of uh, uh, seeking uh, permissions for enhancing our ecs or uh, ec capacities from the current uh, 51.8 to around 83 so from 51.8 to 83 is a long term plan yeah that's a long term plan Okay, and sir, I missed out on this. Uh, when is the next renewal for uh, Kumar Swami, on which this additional premium of twenty-two point five is not applicable? That's next year. Okay, 22. so twenty-two, twenty-two, twenty-two. Which month, if you remember? Mid mid twenty-two something. So probably in FY twenty three, all mines will come under this additional premium of twenty two and a half percent. Yes, yes. The, all the mines will come. Okay, okay. And uh, 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 regarding the question on this exports, since the government has not extended, so uh, what would be the company policy? Will you export and uh, pay this export duty, or you will sell additional volumes in uh, domestic market because? These were very high-grade uh, uh, volumes, which were being exported to Japan and Korea. Probably the domestic market is more for 62, 63 FE, whereas company used to export 64, 65 FE also. So, uh, what would be the company strategy for this uh, volumes, additional volumes, which are now avail- available either via in domestic market or you have to pay export duty and still export? so the, the there is sufficient demand in the domestic market uh, to absorb this absorb this additional in any case we are doing 2 to 2 and a half million tons in the export uh, we are putting uh, that was the quantity so uh, now that is available to be sold in the domestic market and there there exists uh, sufficient demand uh, in the domestic uh, in the domestic market so that should not be a major issue and in any case uh, currently if we have to export we have to pay the duty and uh, then export Uh, sure sir uh, so historically uh, you have uh, gone via long term uh, contract route to export i know volumes obviously one of the reason being cannibalizing agency shipment and this uh, waiver of export duty but now uh, you are in line with the other orissa miners who regularly export so will company use uh, spot opportunities uh, when the demand is low in market or when the domestic uh, iron ore prices is not at parity to export prices since it is uh, uh, since its uh, nmdc position is uh, now in line with the other orissa miners who regularly do export so uh, what would be the company strategy going forward 
so uh, if you look at uh, exports uh, whatever we are doing was uh, high grade ore which was being exported so now mm, that is not there so we uh, or we pay duty and then export if you look at exports from orissa most of it is uh, done in the grades of 57 and below so the low grade ore gets exported uh, because of the uh, d- duties uh, i mean the uh, zero duty uh, there is no duty on that uh, below 57 so uh, Yeah, as far as the NMDC goes, we don't have any um, major quantities of low-grade ore available. So we'll look at that opportunity as and when it it is available. Ah, uh, uh, sure, sir. Uh, and my last question on the steel plant, which has a separate uh, iron ore mine for itself. What's the development uh, progress on that, and uh, is that mine also getting started along with the steel plant, or? Uh, uh if you can give some dates on that mining capacity approval on that and how much amount has been spent for development of that mine so there is no uh, separate mine uh, attached to uh, the steel plant so so when the steel plant starts you will be using existing uh, uh, nmdc volumes to to that plant yeah exactly 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 so the existing uh, ore from our mines only is getting utilized for this uh, steel plant okay thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of rohit poti from marshmallow capital please go ahead uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on uh, delivering such uh, excellent uh, set of numbers uh so my questions are primarily around the mmdr amendment that came in recently so one of the major amendments it seems to be the fact that uh, rather than uh, uh, designating the mining lease as the legal, legal entity the mine itself has been designated as a legal entity and uh, 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 my understanding is that the uh, any approval uh, ecsc etc which uh, which is obtained for the mine will be valid for the entire economic life of the mine uh so is my understanding here correct yeah yeah, yeah. as far as we we also understand this whole thing it, it is uh, what you are speaking of yes so the, so this means pretty much that any ecsc clearance i mean so in that there is also this additional uh, 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 provisions which favor the psu uh, miners in the sense that any uh, mine that is with psu will automatically get extended beyond uh, after the mining lease period is over so this pretty much means that once we get an ecsc clearance uh, as you were saying let's say for 83 million tons that will remain in place for the entire life economic life of the mine and even if the mining lease expires there is no uh, 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 there is no issue in terms of getting the whole clearance again am i right yeah that is what we also understand and uh, uh, now normally most of the my psus uh, mines i mean we expect them to get renewed Uh, what we are looking at is uh, now this 51 we are asking for a enhancement of uh, based on our reserves we are asking for an enhancement of our ec capacity understood so once the ec is ob- obtained it will be valid for the entire life of the mine let's say if it is 50 years 100 years whatever right currently the uh, current lease uh, in baladilla sector are va- valid up to 2035 so hopefully we should get an extension after that No, no, so my confusion, so my confusion was the mining lease is valid up to 2035, but the economic life of the mine would be let's say till 2070 or something. So my understanding is that yes. since, so since the mine is uh, the legal entity, the ECFC whatever we take is valid till the economic life of the mine and not the mining lease. Is that, is that understanding correct? Yeah, currently that is what is our our understanding also. Currently Perfect. that is what okay. is our understanding also. Understood. That was helpful, and with uh, the MMDR provisions also allowing transfer of mines uh, more easily. Uh, are we looking? And given that we do not have any major, uh, no presence in Orissa, which is the largest iron ore producer on, uh, in the country, are we looking? I mean, uh, 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 given our cash balance and cash flow, will we look at uh, acquisitions and uh, the such strategies going forward? Yeah, we have been talking to the government of Orissa and other, uh, similarly to other state governments also. where there are mining assets available i don't know specifically uh, we are talking to them in terms of uh, allocate allocation of mines to nmdc understood so do you expect something to happen in the next couple of years or you still waiting for guidelines from the ministry to come on this no we are, we are talking to the state governments basically and also to the ministry also yes 
perfect and and uh, my last question is uh, on uh, so again on the mmdr act uh, there are i mean so we have a lot of mines which are stuck due to legacy issues and litigation issues uh, so it's curious to know uh, and again uh, the uh, act seems to indicate that uh, those will be resolved quickly to ensure uh, production comes on stream quickly in the past for example we have uh, expressed interest in the bpmel mines which are my understanding is of very very high quality and the uh, reserves are also quite good so uh, do do you see anything happening on those uh, do you see the litigation going away and uh, getting access to those mines as well going forward i couldn't get your question with uh, what was this mine you're talking of um, so uh, again my understanding as per the provisions of the mmdr act is that they are uh, liti- uh, the legacy issue uh, mines or liti- lit- the mines that are litigated uh, those will be resolved quickly and mining production will begin soon so uh in the past for example we have expressed interest in one of the litigated mines which was bpmel mines uh which my understanding the, is that the bpmel mines are of very high quality and the reserves are also quite high so do you see litigated mines like bpmel uh, to come on stream for us uh, do you intend to participate and buy them etc no uh, uh, i am not aware of this uh, bpmml thing uh, whatever mines so uh, in any case we don't uh, nmdc at the currently we do not have any mines which are under litigation so uh, so that question at, the, at this point of time is not relevant uh, we don't have any mines uh, which are under litigation uh, which are under litigation in in, in fact uh, other way around if there is uh, uh any mines uh, which are there like i told you we have been talking to the state governments and we have been uh, which have been auctioned but not started we are talking to um, uh, state governments uh, so we will ask them for allocation of those mines to us so that we, the, uh, uh, there is an enhancement of iron ore production i mean the, uh, there currently there, there appears to be some sort of shortage so we would uh, we are requesting if any mines which are there which have been auctioned but the miners are, i mean the owners have not started production so they, that could be allocated to us so in that context we are talking to the state governments thank you we would request the current participant to please come back in the question queue for any follow up question as we have several participants waiting for their turn the next question is from the line of mr mukherjee from cement please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question uh, sir could you highlight on the near term outlook on indian domestic iron ore prices uh, pardon uh, come again please uh, sir a brief outlook if you could uh, give on the indian iron ore prices uh, considering the current uh, tight availability of uh, merchant uh, ore in the market so uh, if you if you look at the current uh, in case of orissa uh, which is the main uh, main producing state at this point of time uh, so the production in orissa has also uh, gone up but i believe the demand is uh, there is a substantial up- uptick in the demand also because most of the uh, steel plants have ramped up capacities uh, uh, to 80 90% so uh, the demand still exists uh, there is a very uh, strong demand in orissa Uh, also we are seeing uh, demand from other locations of other steel plants also so we do believe that uh, the prices uh, would be uh, uh, buoyant at this point of time uh, however looking at the um, current monsoon season uh, we see a, um, a downtrend in prices of steel so that would probably uh, again affect our uh, uh, pricing however uh, in the long term uh, we do believe that uh, prices will uh, are strong and uh, will remain stable All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. We would request the participants to please limit your questions to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Ashish Kejriwal from Central Broking. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. So, uh, my question is for this timeline for DMOJ. You said that it's in September end, but uh, if we can, uh, you can say. uh give us a proper timeline you know these things have to be done after that this will happen and so that we can also look at the different timelines because last year in september 2020 we said 6 to 9 months so we are already away 9 months and still we are seeing around 3 to 6 months more than that so what are the things which one should look at like for example when you will come out with the shareholders approval and once you receive shareholders approval how much time you will uh need for for the you know the de- finally demerging and things so if you can give a proper timeline i think that will be helpful 
rather than you know saying that it will be in the second quarter thank you yes if you are there you can also take that question hello hello thank you yes sir the next question is from the line of vinit malu villa sun life please go ahead hello hello are you able to hear me yes yeah, we can hear you maybe you want to answer the previous question then i'll ask ask my question sir yeah yeah you you are talking of timelines sir uh, of the demerger that was the yes, previous participant was asking about that yeah 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 i think a uh, director finance is there he will answer the question on the timelines any question please i have a problem with the mic so can you just what was the question vishal mm, sorry sir uh, i mean that was the previous participant question let me he was asking hello uh, sir ashish uh, is on the line ashish uh, yeah. would you repeat the question please yeah sir my question was that if you can give us a proper timeline for the demerger that like for example when we can call for shareholders approval once you receive that how much time it will take tentative time so those timelines will be helpful rather than saying that it can happen in second or third quarter yeah i'll tell you what the demerger process is first you need a set of accounts and then you get some uh, uh, opinion about fairness and uh, accounting treatment and uh, other uh, other things and then you put it up to board for approval of the draft demerger scheme so this since now the accounts has been accepted so this will be able to do by 31st of july so we expect the board to sort of uh, give its approval to the draft demerger scheme by 31st of july once that happens then we take it to sebi and competition uh, commission of india and come back and then modify if they have something to say and then submit it to the mca by all uh, accounts uh, this is a process after the board approval could take anything between 100 to 160 days depending on how much time sebi take how much time uh, mca uh, other uh, other people take so from if i start from 1st of august so it could be anything between 100 days uh, from august to 160 days from august okay so the first point is board approval Yes, yeah, and that means so that the accounts have been uh, adopted yesterday. So mm -hmm. if we, if I take one four as the uh, appointed date, then we can get, uh, ask the board to get approval, uh, approach the board for its approval of the draft demerger scheme on 31st of uh, uh, July, latest by 31st. That's 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 good. But just one clarification on the royalty part. You said that uh, royalty in fourth quarter. for doni malai was stable from the time they started and for chatisgarh is it only for 3 days because chatisgarh cost around 100 crore and 3 days we must be you know producing not more than 0.4 million ton so that I roughly comes to be around doni malai there is no royalty uh, no premium on kumar sohi production and as per him he said yeah. the uh, doni malai production was only 0.5 million ton Yes. Okay. So, so I have to say on adding Chhattisgarh uh, for the three days it was uh, about uh, around uh, more than that. So uh, that's what I'm saying, sir. Hundred uh, crore you paid for Chhattisgarh, and hundred crore for three days production seems to be much much higher because three days we can produce max point four million ton, and for point four million ton we are paying thousand crore, which means a uh, hundred crore, which means around twenty six hundred rupees per ton as Additional premium, so maths was not matching. So that's why. Produces the premium product, na? The BRC alo. So that's very small part of the overall thing. Okay, I will take offline. Yeah, you can take it offline. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We would request the participants to please submit a question to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Vinay Malu from Bella Sun Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Sir, my question is about your expansion plan. You said that you are filing for expansion of limits, EC limits, etc., about 83 million tons. Uh, now, for this expansion, sir, are you also discussing with potential customers for long-term off-take content, etc.? Because 
you know current situation uh, is seems to be exceptional and there's a good amount of exports happening out of the country but as soon as you know international prices normalize those exports uh, window closes right and there is adequate iron ore available plus there are some mines which will be ramped up also which have got uh, you know allotted after the auctions so how do we secure you know customers for that uh, for that volume and or are you going to rely on spot sales only no technically uh, nmdc what most of the uh, for most of our uh, uh, quantities we have tied up with uh, long term customers only so uh, whether it is in the baladilla sector in uh, in karnataka obviously it, uh, everything is under the monitoring committee auction process so in in case of uh, uh, baladilla we it's all based on long term contracts or long term agreements which we have with uh, uh, customers linkages basically but sir, those those contracts seem to have uh, quite a bit of flexibility about offset quantities right because we see that whenever uh, you know odisha prices are lower etc your customers actually you know start sourcing from there uh, instead of buying from you so correct no obviously it does happen uh, that uh, uh, but then that that, uh, that happens mostly in the chatisgarh sector the uh, where we have smaller customers with these small jar and uh, customers which uh, which tend to uh, move here and there but uh, uh, otherwise uh, if you have if you look at the integrated uh, players whether it is asla metal whether it is gsw whether it is rinl and uh, most of the other players are very consistent players so there is no issue with them and uh, we are to, uh, in constant uh, communication with them in terms of enhancing looking at uh, our uh, additional capacities which will be there for uh, uh, for sale we uh, we have also not closed our options for export uh, for the, those additional volumes also okay okay and sir would you also be looking at valuation addition projects like pellet etc along with that so what we have done is that we are putting up a pellet plant uh, uh, 2 billion tons pellet plant uh, at uh, nagarnar Uh, and uh, there is a slurry pipeline uh, which you, we have uh, that's a phase one of the slurry, slurry pipeline up to nagarnar from uh, bacheli and then a pellet plant at uh, nagarnar and subsequently in the second phase we are coming up with another uh, 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 in the another pipeline up to visakhapatnam and a pellet plant there of around 6 million okay. tons capacity and this is pure pelletization no beneficiation right this is just the old pelletization plant No, no. The, we are putting up a verification plant uh, at uh, both at Kirandul and Bacheli to uh, uh, to benefit the uh, ore uh, specifically. Okay. okay. But sir, we've had very limited successful beneficiation efforts earlier, so that's why I was just wondering. So uh, uh, the, the uh, we have a we are putting up a screening plant uh, uh, which has a dry circuit package uh, of verification. so all that uh, is being done we we have already most of it is now tendered out and uh, some of it is, uh, we are in the process of uh, tendering so we uh, okay. this uh, verification pl- plants uh, verification pr- process is already decided and we will go ahead with that okay and so what is the total project outlay you expect on this pellet and verification plants for the phase 1 uh, sir all put together Should be around uh, uh, anything around seven uh, to eight thousand crores. Okay, so and that will take about what four years? Yeah, yeah. The phase two of the pro- project we have not yet started. The phase one of the okay, project okay. is only uh, done. The phase two of the so project phase one is seven thousand, sir. No, fa- fa- phase one is three thousand. Three thousand. Okay. Understood. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Satya Deep Jain from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, just a couple of uh, questions on uh, your investment. Uh, NMDC is a, a shareholder in Minamcel Ispat. Uh, just on that, uh, uh, any you mentioned your debt number eighty crores in Minamcel. Um, any idea what would be the total debt in Minamcel and How profitable the the plant was uh, running into losses last year. Um, what is the kind of profitability for the plant when you look at some of the peers in the industry? Is it a uh, still a loss making entity this year also? We, we are talking of uh, an Nilachal Spark, and I am. Yes, yes, yes. 
So currently that plant is uh, closed down and uh, it's uh, it, it is uh, under disinvestment. So that plant is uh, will be disinvested by the government. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Penakin Parik from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. I have two quick questions uh, waiting for a long time. My first question is, sir, uh, the 22.5% higher royalty that uh, is now uh, uh, applicable to your mines, uh, your pricing uh, is as, uh, you know, X mine. Uh, so are your customers uh, paying uh, the higher royalty to you or you have to bear the higher royalty? So currently it is not a pass-through item. Uh, so... Uh, uh, but uh, with the, uh, we are taking care of that uh, uh, additional amount uh, in our pricing. So basically, so to your extent, your pricing reflects of the April, May, very sharp price hikes that we had seen uh, by NMDC was also to an extent to account for uh, effectively the 15% royalty going to 22.5% royalty. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, sir, my second question is on the steel plant. Given that uh, uh, plants take a long time to get commissioned, uh, there is startup uh, expenses, uh, and you said that the accounts need to be prepared before the demerger. Uh, so is it fair to say that the demerger process would get completed only after the uh, plant is commissioned, or will it be before the plant is commissioned? So both the processes run at the si simultaneously uh, so there is uh, there is no connectivity between them. Our attempt is to ensure that both the uh, uh, processes are complete at the years. Uh, and after the demerger takes place from this of the steel plant, uh, NMDC would be supplying the iron ore from its mines at market prices uh, to the steel plant, or would there be uh, some discounted pricing? Because the whole point is that the steel plant capex was done with the assumption that it will stay under NMDC and it will have access to lower cost iron ore. Uh, but after the demerger, if it has to pay market price for iron ore, uh, then just trying to understand how will the steel plant be viable. So, uh, so uh, this uh, for uh, as with all other customers uh, who offtake uh, iron ore from us, we have a long-term agreement, and uh, that is also going to be the same with with uh, Nagarna steel plant. Uh, as far as pricing goes, it will be on an arm's length. Uh, it will be an arm's length pricing. Thank you. We would request the current participant to please come back in the question queue for any follow-up questions. The next question is from the line of Mohan Bansali from Bonanza Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Sir, seeing the current auctions in uh, Odisha, do you see any uh, uh, further scope for price increment? And the second thing is then in Nagarna, uh, can you please uh, uh, give us uh, what amount of Hiring will be required for permanent as well as contractual. And what is the status of hiring for the steel plant? Thank you, sir. So if we look at uh, Orissa, the, like I mentioned earlier, currently uh, the prices uh, have more or less peaked uh, in terms of uh, uh, steel prices. And uh, with regard to uh, currently the monsoons are all, all we, uh, have... have uh, traditionally being a dampener on steel prices, especially the long product pricing. So uh, prices are more or less flat now. And uh, we believe that uh, in Orissa also uh, the prices uh, have uh, flattened. So uh, similar with uh, in uh, with regard to RMTC also, uh, currently the, the prices which we, we are operating on is uh, uh, more or less, uh, we believe that uh, uh, there is not much headroom at the moment currently. Uh, for any sort of increase. But going forward, uh, post the monsoons, uh, once the activities pick up uh, with the COVID uh, protocols uh, uh, relaxing, uh, then we believe that uh, things will uh, improve definitely. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ayush Agarwal from Mental Analytics. Please go ahead. Mm, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I just have one quick question, uh, which is, the 22.5% already that we are paying, it gets reflected in our, uh, you know, expense line item. The other statutory levies that we are talking about, uh, is that sales net of that or, you know, where do we uh, count that for? You're talking about the statutory levies? Yeah, the 19.89% we talked about. Ah, so, 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 so they are taking care of in our expenses? Uh, where yeah, is it? Add to that. Yes. 
Sorry? Uh, you were saying something. Yeah, where is it hitting in the PML? One sec, just for that. So uh, you you wanted to know where where it is lifted, uh, reflected in our uh, correct, uh, correct. in our balance sheet. Correct. You are talking of the extra this one. Yeah, so the statutory levies of 19.889 percent. Ah, so they, they, they are being reflected along with our expenses. I mean, uh, in expenditure uh, this one under the royalty line item. Ah, it it, it, will, it will be reflecting under under the royalty item. Yes. So right now, if you see that we are we are paying around 15-50 crores of royalty, which is around 22.5 percent on our sales currently. So how does this add up? You know, 22.5 percent is additional, right? Apart from this 19.8 million. Yes, yes, the 22.5 percent is additional. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Novel Bas from Ashika Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Oh uh, yes, my questions have been answered. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Systematic. Please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, once again on the royalty part, for example, if you see in the last quarter, the royalty number seems to be absurdly high. So is it uh, like a like a normalization of your previous uh, you know production or something like that? And uh, and also, do, would you get a tax deduction for the uh, for the premium that you will pay, or it will be uh, it will it will not be allowed as a deduction? No, I do not think there is any tax uh, uh, benefit there or uh, any relaxation there. Uh, but uh, but then, uh, hello. As, as far as the um, uh, hello, as 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 far as the uh, royalty goes, uh, are uh, you saying that uh, whether it is uh, your question was uh, whether the royalty is uh, hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the premium part would it be allowed for tax deduction, or would it be like uh, you would not be uh, allowed? So then that will be, you know, your tax rate will go high to that extent. No, no. I, I, I mean, in terms of in terms of the pricing, you are talking in terms of the price. No, no. In terms of so when you deduct from your cost, so when you calculate your PBT, so will it be allowed uh, a, 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 you know, yes, yes, a, a deduction for a tax calculation? No, yes, I don't yes, think that is allowed. No, no, it's a normal, uh, it's a normal uh, expenditure item. It will be allowed as a tax deduction. It will be allowed. Yeah. It is a system. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Singh from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Hello, yes. am I audible? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. sir. I just want to understand. We are targeting almost six, seven million tons additional from Chhattisgarh. So, in terms of logistic or evacuation purpose, uh, what has been changed which would allow us to evacuate that much of higher material? And secondly, the debt which is currently sitting on our books uh, post the merger that would completely be transferred to the steel mill books, uh, right? Yeah, the debt would be transferred to the steel plant. That that is. And uh, for the logistics part, as far as logistics goes, uh, there is a doubling of the KK line, which is already taking place. Most of it is uh, complete. Sixty, seventy percent is complete. Uh, partly we are doing, partly uh, based on deposit work basis with the railways, and and the balance stretch from uh, Nagarna to uh, to Jagdal from Jagdalpur to uh, Vishakhapatnam that is being done by railways itself. So most of the work is uh, done. Some patches are uh, uh, are left, uh, which will get completed, which will take some more uh, time. Uh, otherwise, uh, we are able to utilize uh, whatever is available right now. So, uh, as I said, 60-70 percent is complete, so that that availability is there. So we, there should not be any, any difficulty in uh, moving those 18-19 rakes, uh, uh, which we envisage uh, to evacuate uh, uh, the material. So sir, basically, see, right now we are entering into a monsoon phase. So even if we take uh, another six, seven months, because this doubling of line has been taking place from years now, so would that would we have enough for you know time left during this year to actually evacuate kind of a million ton extra every month in last six months or so? Even if we uh, uh, complete everything in next six, seven, uh, maybe three, four months. 
just uh, wondering uh, whether we would have because our first quarter kind of the run rate has been uh, kind of a million ton a month kind of the run rate, right? Sorry, three million yeah, ton yeah. a month kind uh, of uh, around a million million tons here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so what happens is that uh, if you look at our uh, uh, that targets were uh, 44 or uh, around that number. So most of it is uh, 7 million tons is additional from uh, Dhoni Malai. The balance is coming from uh, the additional. Uh, 7 million tons which we are getting is from Dhoni Malai. The balance will come from uh, Baladila. So uh, uh, the balance part of it is not uh, very, uh, the additional which will come from Baladila is we'll be able to take care of it. That is not a very big issue. Evacuation. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Chera from Inam Holdings. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one question on the steel plant. Uh, since you're going through the demerger route, earlier expectation was there was a possibility of a disinvestment or a bringing in a partner in that. But if that is getting delayed or not happening, uh, we will lose the tax benefit because your uh, iron ore company, parent company is very profitable paying full tax. And if you demerge the steel company, uh, which initial years would be making losses, so uh, what's the thought process of uh, a board on that? Because uh, that would act against the wishes of the minority shareholder that you keep paying full taxes in the parent company, whereas you cannot recoup the losses in the subsidiary. So, so what we have done is that we have uh, demerged this company. So that uh, the steel plant is a separate company. Uh, it will be a separate entity in itself, uh, uh, a mirror unit of uh, NMDC, plus the debt, whatever we are taking, taking on. Obviously, for obvious reasons, it, uh, the steel plant uh, it, it doesn't make any money initially. There is going to be some losses uh, there, there. So that that is uh, will be there. We, uh, I mean, we are, we are not yet. Uh, decided or uh, uh, but it, it is going to be a separate entity at the moment yes you would yeah. like to add on or anything on this if you're there mr mukherjee oh, sorry sorry okay. my mic was off sorry, oh. my mic was. so so what the question is uh, uh, you can repeat the question for him to no, so my question to the board is that okay, when, the, there are, when there is no visibility whether that steel plant would be divested or you're bringing in a partner and you're going ahead with the demerger and creating a separate entity, uh, there would be losses for two, three years and probably something would happen after that. Where is your parent NMDC, which is a profitable company, you're paying full tax and uh, there will be tax outgo. Whereas uh, you will be not be able to offset uh, steel losses ever. So how does it uh, benefit the minority shareholder? And how could that, uh, if there is no visibility, how, 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 how this can be justified to the shareholder? Well, I've understood your question. Now listen to me. Uh, first of all, you are seeing it only from the principle of tax benefit. But it will also reduce the profits in the first place. So the tax benefit is much lesser from then, then what it would have reduced the uh, uh, net profits in the first place. So if I was making a loss of 1,000 crores in uh, the steel plant, so my bottom line will go down by uh, 1,000 crores and my tax benefit will only yeah, be around 30 crores. Uh, sorry, 300 crores. So the, the net loss still would be to the shareholders of 700 crores. So, but it is a hundred percent subsidiary. It will be anyway consolidated. We look at consolidated profits, sir. So, it's not a not a subsidiary. Right now, it is a uh, part of NMDC itself. No, sir. That's what I'm saying. When you even create a hundred percent subsidiary, creating a separate entity, it would remain a NMDC subsidiary. The consolidated accounts would anyway reduce your consolidated profits, but would lead to a full tax outgo of the iron ore profits, sir. Yes. So, so how does it benefit the shareholder community, sir? This company, the steel company, is never a subsidiary of uh, of uh, NMDC as of now. It, it is a part of the main uh, mining company itself. It is not a subsidiary. And it will straight away be demerged. 
ठीक <laughs> 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 Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mangal Nivedya from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening, sir. Just uh, two clarification on the steel uh, division. One is uh, since you expect Q commissioning, what is your commercial HRC volume guidance for FI twenty two and twenty three? And second, in one of the previous questions, you said that there is no mine allocated to the steel plant. But uh, from memory, if I recall, there was deposit 13, which was under JV with CMBC and NMBC, and that went into trouble because of some MBO allotment to Adani. So, is there any uh, update on that uh, mine, and is that uh, or, or that mine is now not seen any progress, and we expect only supply from NMBC to the steel plant? So, currently we have uh, two mines under. Uh, Uh, NCL, which is an NBC CMBC Limited, which is deposit 13 and deposit 4. So deposit 4 is quite in a quite uh, advanced stage of being allocated to an NBC. So once that uh, order comes, then uh, from the state government, then we seek all the clearances, the forest clearances, the environment clearances. As far as uh, deposit 13 goes, uh, uh, still uh, the matter is yet to be decided. Uh, so it still remains uh, under question because the state government has cancelled the. Uh, Uh, the gram sabha or the uh, clearance which was given earlier so that is still under uh, discussion uh, with the state government so uh, uh, so there, uh, but uh, in any case uh, there is no steel uh, there is no mines which has be, which are attached to the uh, with uh, to nagarna steel plant uh, and whatever we supply iron ore will be supplied it will be uh, it will be on an arms length uh, distance uh, similar to what other we are doing with all other customers Uh, and okay. with regard to uh, the uh, selling of uh, sales of uh, nagarna steel plant products you, you you mentioned that also uh, yeah so the volume guidance in f in, in the second half of this year and next year hrc volume that we uh, seem to sell so what what happens basically when once you start the steel plant uh, uh, most of the products uh, will be Uh, we, we would not be certain of the quality or the grade of the material so there will be most of it would be non standard uh, uh, products which we uh, which would be produced so we currently don't have uh, we would not like to comment on the sort of volumes which will be available and so once the commissioning process is over so that would take around 6 uh, the total uh, uh, ramp up and commissioning so then uh, we will be able to come out with some sort of figures but uh, most of the product which will be there now available which will, will be all non standard products thank you that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to mr vishal chandra yeah thank you very much uh, thank you everyone for uh, participating and um, my apologies if you've not been you know able to ask your questions the queue was pretty long um thank you very much sir and uh, for any other questions uh, please feel free to uh, write to nmbc uh, sir any uh, over to you for your closing remarks me thank you so much uh, uh, vishal uh, we have had a very uh, good q4 uh, and uh, hopefully going forward uh, in fy22 also we intend the, the uh, most important thing is to start uh, the commission the steel plant that is one of our main uh, areas of concern uh, there has been substantial delays and we would like to de- uh, run this demerger process and commissioning of the steel plant the other thing is uh, we would uh, we would like to ramp up production uh, to uh, the uh, 44 million tons at least in and around that figure is what we wanted to do uh, we want to in- we intend to do prices are looking good so we want to take advantage of the whole situation and uh, there's good demand uh, uh, in the country domestic demand demand you know, uh, exports obviously we are not looking at uh, too much at exports at this point of time uh, looking at uh, trying to satisfy the domestic demand so these are uh, some things which we and, uh, and also the most important thing is uh, to also 
uh, ensure that our uh, the slurry pipeline and uh, the capex spending on the slurry pipeline and the uh, the screening plant at uh, Kirandul. We are also coming up with a screening plant at uh, uh, at Doni Malai also SP2. So we intend to enhance our capacities. We intend to uh, uh, revamp our uh, existing uh, loading plants and other old equipment. In fact, we are we are running it. Uh, we are getting in uh, uh, our HEM equipment plan is to uh, is also we want to get in more equipment and uh, heavy duty equipment so that uh, we. Uh, are able to take care of the uh, production. Uh, as regards uh, logistics also, we want to improve our uh, evacuation plans. Uh, in doubling of the, we would intend to see, uh, ensure that uh, uh, the doubling of the TT line takes place as a, as a yes, we're talking to railways. So all this put together, uh, we have, uh, uh, the, the plan for future is, uh, looks bright for NMDC. And uh, uh, thank you for having us uh, here for the call. Thank you. On behalf of Dan Capital that concludes this conference.